after this um, incident in the cave, he was shocked and frightened and ran home to his wife and said, uh, and relayed to her what happened. But she said, don't worry, God will never disgrace you. You keep family ties, you help the weak, you serve the guest, you support the destitute, and you, you help those in trouble. So she was the first one to believe in his message and his mission as a prophet. His prophethood had three distinct phases. And during the first three years, he preached discreetly to trusted friends and relatives. During the next 10 years, he preached publicly <coughs> in Mecca in the face of ridicule, persecution, assaults, boycotts, and assassination attempts. And then for the last 10 years of his prophethood, he escaped Mecca and established a community in Medina that lived according to the Quran, defended itself against um, uh, attacking tribes, made treaties with neighboring tribes, attracted delegations from throughout the, throughout the region, and then of course peacefully united the peninsula. A lot of accomplishments for 10 years. His lifestyle was very simple. At home, he slept on a straw mat, and his pillow was an animal skin stuffed with palm leaves. He owned a few pots for water, dates, and barley. As for his clothing, he dressed as did the men in his community, but he often had as little as a single unsewn cloth, or what we would call a sarong. For his food, he lived mostly on dates and milk, and seldom lit a fire in his house to cook food. He helped carry bricks to build the mosque, he helped with the housework, and he repaired his own shoes. So you can see he was a simple person with a simple lifestyle and diet. As for his appearance and manners, he was medium height and build. He had light skin, black hair and eyes, and a thick beard. He was strong and athletic and walked briskly. He smiled often, but did not laugh loud. He seldom spoke, but when he did, he did so with purpose, deliberation, and eloquence. He always invited someone to share his meal. And he loved children, respected elders, and was particularly attentive to the poor. For his relations with others, he was extremely generous. In fact, he never turned down anyone's request for help or material things. One time someone asked him for the shirt he was wearing, and he took it off and gave it to him. It's not like he would go to his closet and choose one of the dozens that were still in the closet. He had no other, but he gave the one off of his back. If asked for any of his possessions, he gave it. If he had nothing to give, he allowed the petitioner to take a loan in his name. And if he was needy, he was offered loans because his reputation for repaying them was flawless. He was also very forgiving. Although he was persecuted um, intensely in Mecca for 10 years, he never raised his voice or hand in anger or took revenge for personal grievances. He prayed for those who, who per persecuted him and other Muslims. He was also selfless. Both the Quran and the prophetic traditions show how he preferred others over himself. And I'm just going to tell you one of my favorite stories about Prophet Muhammad. This is my favorite of all times, and there are so many good ones to choose from. Once he was sitting in a crowd with some of his uh, companions, and they were sitting on the ground in like a circle discussing some very important matters, and a man came in with a single piece of fruit and presented it as a gift to Prophet Muhammad. And he accepted the fruit, and he took a bite, and then everyone in the sitting with him was waiting to see what he'll do, and he took another bite and another and another, and he finished that single piece of fruit. The man walked away, and of course, Muhammad thanked him for his gift and everything. He walked away. So his companions, you know, they were very outspoken, and they had nothing, they were not shy to say what, they, what was on their mind. They said, oh, Prophet Muhammad, why did you not share? You always share the food that's given to you as a gift, but this time you ate the whole thing by yourself. What happened? He said, well, I took the first bite and I realized that the fruit was not ripe. In fact, it was very bitter. So uh, I knew if I passed it to you, you would give it up and you would embarrass that man who came to me with what he could give. So I chose to eat the whole thing instead. And so you can see how many wonderful qualities he had just from this one story. That's my favorite story about Prophet Muhammad. Now, he was a man, and he was an exceptional in many, many ways, but he was also a prophet. And this is what Muhammad is recognized for in the Muslim world. As in his role as a prophet, 
he had the very important role of serving as a conduit of divine revelation and to ensure its correct transcription. Okay, he received the revelation, we can say as sound files that came to him. His responsibility was to relay the sound files as he received them and to make sure that they were transcribed correctly and memorized perfectly. So that was his biggest task as a prophet. Secondly, he also explained God's commandments, the commandments of the Quran, and demonstrated their practical application in personal and, personal and communal life. This was very important because sometimes not every minute detail uh, of our, um, you know, the way we should conduct our lives is um, given in the Quran. But with the commandments, he was able to demonstrate exactly what was meant in this message from God. And then thirdly, Prophet Muhammad restored pure monotheism to Mecca and to the Arabian Peninsula and beyond. The, the pure monotheism that was adopted by Abraham, and one way of doing this was clearing the Kaaba of all the idols that were there in his time, and also simultaneously cleansing men's heart of what is called the greatest sin. Now, you might be wondering, what is the greatest sin? The greatest sin, according to the Quran, is, of course, not believing in God or ascribing partners to him. So, Muhammad set the record straight uh, regarding this question, that there is only one God and nothing else deserves to be worshipped. Muhammad also worked as an educator with fine communication skills and simple eloquence. He taught people on a variety of subjects, including law, hygiene, family life, and social relations. He encouraged literacy and arranged for education in his community. Someone asked him, who are the learned? And very wisely he replied, those who practice what they know. He worked as a philanthropist. In fact, he said, the best among people are those who benefit mankind. He fed the hungry and encouraged others to do so. He said, he is not a believer who eats his fill when his neighbor beside him is hungry. He carried the loads of the weak and gave loans to the needy. He said, one who meets with others and shares their burdens is better than one who lives a life of seclusion and contemplation. He promoted cooperation and goodwill in the community. He said, do you know what is better than charity, fasting, and prayer? Keeping peace and good relations between people. And he cared for many widows and orphans and said, the best house among Muslims is the one that houses an orphan who is treated well. He was a social activist. He supported laborers and advised people to pay the worker his wage before his sweat dries. That means pretty quick, especially in Kuwait. He was a feminist who supported women's rights, especially financial independence, <coughs> choice, and dignity and he also followed their counsel. Many times he would ask one of his wives or some uh, female members of the community for their advice, and he often heeded their advice.